Just as railroads were signaling the end of commercial traffic along the Upper Delaware, they were ushering in a whole new industry, tourism. <laughs> Between the late 1800s and early 1900s, the number of railroad stations in the Upper Delaware region doubled then tripled. Subsequently, so did the number of large resorts. Trains offered a fast, comfortable trip from big cities like New York and Philadelphia and gave city dwellers a chance to escape to the beauty and charm of the River Valley. To cater to the vacation invasion, a cottage industry of tourist camps, boarding houses, fishing lodges, and five-star resorts sprang up in towns and villages all along the river corridor. Well, of course, it, it began um, around 1832 when Francois Duteau built the Kittatinny House, which was almost across the river from where we're standing. Uh, and then after the Civil War and the railroad came that uh, made a direct connection between Philadelphia and New York City uh, with this area, that's when the, the, the tourist industry really started to develop. Large resorts like the Grandview House, Delaware House and Sand Spring Farm placed advertisements in big city papers boasting of electric lights, hot and cold running water, and pure mountain air free of malaria, and all for as little as $2 a night. It changed the economy of the area from what was once a rural agricultural economy into one that was based on the tourist industry. and. Uh, you had farmers turning their houses into boarding places for the tourists, for instance. By the 1950s, roadways had replaced railroads as primary transportation. Visitors by the car loads started pouring into the Upper Delaware region, something they continue to do to this day. Between Memorial Day and Labor Day, the stretch of river in the Upper Delaware Valley becomes flooded with people. Um, each year we get about five million visitors to the Delaware Water Gap National Recreation. We get them year-round, but most of the folks come in the warmer months of July and August and September. And then we get lots of folks coming in the fall for the beautiful fall colors up and down the river. We also get a number of hunters uh, throughout the fall season. And we get some visitors who will canoe or fish or boat all year. What attracts so many people is the diversity of the river and wide range of activities and attractions of the surrounding area. Rafters and tubers can float lazily through quiet canyons, while whitewater kayakers and canoeists can test themselves against class one and two rapids. In the northern narrows, wildlife attracts nature lovers and sports fishermen, while in deeper, wider water near the gap, motor power craft are permitted. Protecting both the river and those using it is the responsibility of the National Park Service. Thousands of visitors enjoy this river. They canoe and boat all year long. In order to keep them safe, rangers patrol the river uh, up and down this segment and up and down the entire 30-some miles of the park. Park Service isn't alone when it comes to keeping the heads of rivergoers above water. They get a lot of help and they get it from a group of volunteers. The National Canoe Safety Patrol was formed in 1979 after the number of accidents on the Delaware started to rise with the number of recreational boaters. The NCSP is comprised of more than 100 volunteers trained in river rescue and first aid who volunteer weekends to patrol the river. Well, we run sections of the river that have been targeted either by the Park Service or by our past experience as being trouble areas. Areas of high usage or areas where the rapids are of such a configuration that you get problems. The boaters either tend to swim a lot or they get hung up a lot. They tend to bend up their boats there. Places where people do get injured. 
Although the Upper Delaware River continues to be busy, over the years it has become safer. The number of injuries and drowning victims over the past 10 years have dropped significantly, even though the number of those using the river continues to climb. One of the things that park visitors can do to be safe is to always wear a life jacket. If you're in a boat on the river or if you're wading or swimming in the river, wear your life jacket. Most of the fatalities could have been prevented if folks had simply worn a life jacket. It's one of the simplest, most effective things a visitor can do to protect his safety. Although for many, the Delaware River is a playground, for others it's a way of life. When we come back, we'll meet some people who make their living on the river.